Hi everyone, let us discuss this nested interval theorem. Actually, it is a special case of Cantor's intersection theorem. So if you have already gone through the Cantor's intersection theorem, you will find it is very easy. Okay. What they have mentioned, we have Zn is a closed interval. Actually, it is a sequence of closed intervals. Zn is defined in this way, An comma Bn. Okay. One more thing, Zn plus one subset of Zn. That means it is a decreasing uh, sequence of intervals, right? So let me mention given thing we have Zn is equal to close interval An comma Bn. Uh, N belongs to set of natural number. The second thing that j n plus 1 subset of j n for all n belongs to set of natural number. Okay. So let me draw the diagram so the picture will be clear to you. This is a real line. Okay. Suppose a1 is here, a1, b1. So this is a close interval a1, comma b1, j1, right? j2 is subset of j1. Starting point a2, ending point b2 getting j3 is subset of j2 again since this is decreasing uh, sets of intervals right so here we will have a3 here we will have b3 in this way we have to continue for infinitely many times okay so this is a given scenario and what we have to prove we have to prove that intersection is non-empty let me mention to prove that intersection jn n belongs to set of natural number is not equal to phi. So we have to prove that intersection is non-empty, right? And after that, few more things we need to prove, but let us focus on this part first. After completing it, we will go for the next part. Uh, this thing we have, okay? So see, what will I do now? I am going to define one set, A. I am going to define one set. A is equal to, A is a set of all n's, where n belongs to set of natural number. That means A contains A1, A2, A3, A4 and so on. Okay, all n's. Here we will have A4, here we will have A5, here we will have A6. In this way, we will have infinitely many a's and A is a set of all these points. So obviously there are many points. So therefore, A is non-empty, A is non-empty. Okay, let us move further. So we have taken one non-empty set A. Let us use this second information. What is the information we have? We have J n plus 1 subset of J n. J n plus 1 subset of J n. J n plus 1 means what? It is A n plus 1 B n plus 1. Subset of J n means A n comma B n. So let me show you in diagram. Suppose we have a n here we have b n. So a n plus 1 is uh, comma b n plus 1 is subset of this set that means a n plus 1 will be somewhere here and b n plus 1 will be somewhere here. So that's why this j n plus 1 will be a subset of this set z. Agree? So see therefore this type of relation we have. So a n less than or equal to a n plus 1, a n plus 1 less than or equal to b n plus 1 and b n plus 1 less than or equal to b n and this is true for all n belongs to set of natural numbers and this is also true for all n. They have already mentioned, right? Let me call it as star. This is so much important thing. So that's why I'm giving some numbers. So star, okay? Let us move further. Therefore, a n less than or equal to a n plus 1. I am writing the same, huh? b, sorry, b n plus 1 less than or equal to b n. But see, all these numbers are less than or equal to that b, b 1, which is the end point. So, less than or equal to b 1 for all n belong to set of natural number, right? So, let us drop all these terms. Let us focus on just first and last term. What will I get? A n less than or equal to B1 for all n. But as you can see that A n is a members of set A. It means all elements of A 
are less than or equal to B1. It means B1 is an upper bound of set A. Therefore, B1, I should mention, therefore, B1 is an upper bound of set A. Since all elements of A, which are N, are less than or equal to B1, so B1 is a upper bound. But we know that if any set is non-empty, and if it has an upper bound, it has least upper bound. So let me mention, therefore, by least upper bound axiom, A has least upper bound. That means A has some smallest upper bound. So let us call it as C. Say, C, which is equal to least upper bound of A. Okay, C is a least upper bound of A. So let us uh, let us recall what we have to prove. We have to prove that intersection is non-empty. Intersection is non-empty. That means we have to find some points in intersection. So now my target is to prove this point C, which we have got as a least upper bound of A. I will prove that it is in intersection. Okay, so we will prove. Just make a screenshot of it first, then I will go further. Okay, so what we have got, we have got C is a least upper bound, least upper bound. That means basically it is upper bound. Okay, it is the smallest upper bound, but basically it is upper bound. So clearly, C is upper bound, let me mention upper bound of A. This is small c, yeah? it's not capital. C is a upper bound of set A, that means upper bound means all elements of A are less than or equal to C and it is true for all N. Let me call it as 1. Okay. So let us use this star now from star. From star what will I get? Uh, C, A N less than or equal to B N for all N. For all N. Okay. N belongs to set of natural number. That means we can say that Bn, therefore, Bn is upper bound, upper bound of A. We are getting the point Bn is also upper bound of A. On this diagram also you can easily see that Bn is also upper bound of set A. So, but C is least upper bound of A. We are getting the point Bn is upper bound of A, but C is what? Least or smallest upper bound of A. So obviously this type of relation they will have C less than or equal to Bn for all n belongs to set of natural numbers. So let me call it as 2. So let us combine 1 and 2. Let me remove this part. Then we will combine 1 and 2. Just a minute. Huh? Okay. So from 1 and 2. So let us combine a n less than or equal to c and c less than or equal to b n for all n belongs to set of natural number. Okay. It means c belongs to close interval a n comma b n. It lies between a n and b n. So it belongs to the interval. But see we have already called it as z n. Therefore c belongs to z n for all n. C, C lies in all z n, that means C lies in intersection, intersection z n, n belongs to set of natural number. It means we got an element in intersection, that means intersection is non-empty. Therefore, intersection z n, n belongs to set of natural number is not equal to phi. So in this way, we prove the first part. Now we have to prove the second part, right? Second part, uh, they have added one condi condition. That condition is if the length of z tends to z is 0, length of z tends to 0, then intersection has exactly one point. This thing we have to prove. Okay. That thing also we will prove. Just make a screenshot of it and then we will go further. See, now we have a condition that limit of length of z goes to 0. That limit is 0. We have to prove that intersection contains exactly one point. So, generally in mathematics, what we do? When we want to prove something, we assume exactly opposite to that. So here also I will assume, let it possible, intersection contains two points, okay. 
let if possible c and d there are two points in intersection n belongs to set of natural number okay so it means c and d belongs to they this points lie in intersection it means they are present in all sets belongs to j n for all n belongs to set of natural number okay suppose this type of set we have j uh, this is n b n right this is set j n and suppose c and d two points are there so obviously distance between these two points that means generally we denote by mod in r less than or equal to the total length of z length of z okay let us continue here mm, yes here so zero less than or equal to mod c minus d less than or equal to length of z but the given information is length of z goes to zero as n tends to infinity now the problem is that mod c minus d is bounded below by zero and it is bounded above by some length but it is also going to zero that means mod c minus d will be zero so mod is zero that means c minus d is zero let us shift d on that side so c is equal to d it means we assume there are two points but finally we got those two points are not different both are same therefore the intersection has only one point has exactly one point so in this way we have completed the proof of nested interval theorem just make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you in next video